Hello everyone, this is group 2. We will be discussing about rubber. Rubber is a versatile material used to manufacture different products, contracts when heated. Molecules become actually more intact. It is highly durable, good insulator, a polymer and elastic. Polymer is a large molecule built by repetitive bonding of smaller molecules, which are monomers. For elastomer, polymers having the property of elasticity. Due to the flexibility of long chain molecules, no permanent chain when stretched. Unstretched rubber is amorphous. Stretched rubber has some crystallinity and order. In 1000 BC, Incas, Aztecs, and Olmecs used natural rubber as balls for games. In 1751, first scientific paper on rubber was written by Charles Marie de la Codamine. In 1839, vulcanization method by Charles Goodyear was discovered. In 1845, the first pneumatic tire by Robert Thompson was made. In 1891, First detachable pneumatic tire, Edward Michelin. In 1909, first synthetic rubber, polymerized methane isopropene Fritz Hoffman. In World War II, synthetic rubber production due to natural rubber shortage. In 1946, radial trials by Pierre Marcel Ford. For types of rubber, we have natural rubber and synthetic rubber. Natural rubber, or cis 14 polyisoprene, is commonly extracted from latex sap of the tree Hevea brasiliensis, or rubber tree. It has a characteristic of high tensile strength and moderately resistant to heat. It should not be exposed to ozone, oils, and solvents, and it's eco-friendly and recyclable. It's commonly used on gaskets, seals, hoses, tubings, and tires. Synthetic rubber, on the other hand, are made from petroleum products such as ethylene, propene, and butadiene. It's only attained through laboratory or factory polymerization. It has a good abrasion and heat resistance, and because it is more easier to produce, it's commonly used on rubber products. 70% um, of rubber products are made from synthetic rubber. For common types of synthetic rubber that are produced in this industry, we have styrene butadiene rubber or SBR. It has a characteristics of high abrasion resistance and tensile strength. It has it is more durable than other synthetic rubbers, although it has poor resistance to solvent, ozone, and oils. It is less expensive than other synthetic rubbers, and since this is commonly produced, it has five billion tons produced annually. And commonly used on automobile tires, automotive parts, shoe soles, wires, and cables. Natural rubber are products which require high oil resistance. Um, it has less flexible than natural rubber, has a poor resistance to ozone and flames, and not suitable for use with polar solvents. You commonly you see this on O rings, oil seals, gaskets, fuel hoses, and especially nitrile grubs. Gloves. Next is butyl rubber. Um, it's commonly used for inner tubes and high pressure applications. It is airtight and gas impermeable, so it's useful on usage where fluids, commonly gases, are used. And it has suit suitable for shock and vibration damping. And commonly used on sealant, bottle stoppers, speaker surrounds, basketball, and chewing gum. Next is polychloroprene rubber or neoprene. It, it is a general purpose rubber, has a balance of physical and chemical properties, has moderate resistance to petroleum based fluids. It also has waterproofing and insulating properties. It's commonly used on wires and cables, diving suit, laptop sleeves, and door seals. Lastly, we have silicon rubber or polysiloxane or used for. For extreme temperature applications, um, it is chemically inert and easy to sterilize. Because of this char these characteristics, it is more expensive to produce than other synthetic rubbers. Available in both solid and liquid forms, and commonly used on remote control keypads, snorkel mouthpiece, cooking utensils, med and medical tubings. Also, we have other kinds of rubber products like 
pencil racers, balloons, inflatable bed, puzzle maps, braces, ala- ala- elastics, rubber toys, conveyor belts, and rubber bands that are the commonly used synthetic rubbers on their composition. For major companies involved in rubber industry, we have three local companies. First, we have is EC Industrial Rubber Corporation. This company is well known for providing a dependable and affordable source of rubber products that adhere to the highest standards of quality. Their rubber products are mostly utilized in industrial applications, particularly on highways and bridges, as well as indoor and outdoor environments. They manufacture a variety of rubber goods to address consumer specifications. Compounding involves the use of variety of materials including neoprene rubber, nitrile rubber, ethylene propylene diene rubber, python rubber, and silicon rubber. Some of its well-known products are rubber mat, rubber strips, rubber water stop, rubber joint filler, and elastomeric bearing pad. Second is Manila Rubber Corporation. It is a business that specializes in the production of rubber soling material. Today, they have expanded their product line and developed durable rubber floorings in the form of tiles, rolls, sheets, and bricks. The business is considered as the leading producer of rubber flooring in the Philippines, which continues to be the company's reason of existence. Their goods are highly suggested and preferred to use by a variety of prof- professionals, including architects, interior designers, landscape artists, engineers, contractors, athletes, and so on. Their products include an outdoor basketball court, a running track, a tennis court surface, playground flooring, gym mat flooring, and a playground surface. And lastly, for local companies, we have RK Rubber Enterprise Corporation. This company is a reputable rubber producer in the Philippines since 1990. They supply or manufacture the finest grade rubber goods across the nations. They provide range of superior design rubber goods to assist such businesses in presenting a high quality product to the public. Industrial rubber performs a variety of tasks and produces a variety of goods, including seals, bumpers, gaskets, shock absorbers rubber, rubber pad, rubber ramp, rubber bushing, rubber door seal, and tubing. RK Rubber also offers food grade rubber for applications involving consumables and other essential rubber components. Then, moving on to international companies involved in rubber industry. First, we have Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. It was founded in year 1898 and had became world's largest tire company in 1916. They also produced the first American-made synthetic rubber tire. They also built fighter planes, nylon tires, Tires on TV, racing tires, or radial, radial ply tires, and car mat. In present day, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company continues to earn top honors in rubbers and plastics category of Fortune Magazine's list of America's most admired companies. They also have facilities across the world and annual sales of more than $15 billion. In addition, the Goodyear brand tires, they also produce well-respected international brand names. Then next is Arland Seo Holding TV. The company is widely regarded as one of the world's top synthetic rubber producers and it is a subsidiary of Saudi Aramco, which is the world's biggest energy and chemical conglomerate. They are involved in the development, production, and marketing of high-performance rubbers that that are utilized in a variety of applications. Currently, they have 20 manufacturing facilities in nine nations across four continents, Europe, North and South America, and Asia. Their most well-known products are bromobutyl rubber, butadiene rubber, ethylene vinyl acetate rubber, and nitrile butadiene rubber, among others. And then lastly, for international companies, we have Bridgestone Corporation. It was founded in year 1931 in the Japanese city of Kurume. 
Bridgestone creates the first radial tires for passenger vehicles in Japan. They were recognized as one of the world's top tire manufacturers in 2007. They manufacture tires and rubbers for passenger cars, light trucks, buses, aircraft, construction, and off-road mining vehicles, industrial and agricultural machinery, motorcycles, scooters, and other vehicles. They also manufacture automotive parts, automotive maintenance and repair services, as well as raw materials for tires and other products. However, the problem with natural and synthetic rubber is that they are too soft, and thus they are hardened through a process called vulcanization or curing. Uh, in this process, the rubber is heated with a curing agent such as sulfur or other metal oxides that hardens the rubber. Uh, vulcanization also increases the elasticity and durability of the rubber. In the picture at the right, we can see a rubber molecule before and after vulcanization. As you can see, the vulcanized rubber has now what we call as cross links. Uh, as said earlier, vulcanization was a process invented by Charles Goodyear. The process is very useful in the industry until today and the Goodyear Tire Company was named after him. The first step in the production of automobile tires is the mixing of raw materials. Both natural and synthetic rubber are used. Natural rubber is the main component of the tread layers while synthetic rubbers such as butadiene and styrene butadiene rubber are for the parts of the threads. As many as 20 different types of rubber may be used for tire manufacturing. Meanwhile, carbon black is added as a reinforcing agent to improve durability and sulfur is used for the vulcanization process. Also, other chemicals are added to reduce wear and increase the grip of the tire. During mixing, heat is applied in order to soften the rubber and evenly distribute the chemicals. The temperature during mixing is 160 to 170 degrees Celsius during the first stage and 100 to 110 degrees Celsius during the final stage. Uh, if the temperature is too high, then the rubber compound may be damaged. After mixing, the product goes through a rolling mill that squeezes them into thick sheets of rubber. Uh, the thick sheets of rubber are then sent to various machines to make the different parts of the tire, such as the textile cord, the steel cord, the inner liner, the thread, the sidewall, and bead. Uh, the calendar machine coats the rubber into the textile thread and steel cord. Uh, the extruder, on the other hand, forces the rubber through a die to produce a desired shape. Then, all of the parts are then sent into a tire building machine that assembles the tires. After this, we now have a tire, but it still needs to undergo curing or vulcanization. The tire is then sent into a molder and it is filled with hot steam with a temperature of about 280 degrees Celsius. Afterwards, the tire is cooled and is sent into a test wheel where it is inflated and spun. The test wheel measures the balance of the tire and whether if it runs in a straight line. Uh, in modern days, uh, a tire is rarely rejected. In the making of a basketball, we first have to make the core of the ball, which is known as the interior bladder. This interior is the one that retains air and gives the ball its bounce. Uh, first, the black butyl rubber is melted into a press which feeds it out as a continuous sheet. Then, a cutter cuts this into smaller pieces. It is then sent into a punch press that punches a 1 inch diameter hole that will hold the air for inflating the bladder. Then, the, in the air tube is manually inserted by hand. It is now sent to another punch press that stamps rounded edges and then binds these edges. Afterwards, the interior bladder is now sent to a vulcanizer that heats rubber under pressure in order to make it more flexible and durable. The bladder is also inflated in the vulcanizer 
and if it stays inflated for 24 hours, then it passes the initial testing stage. But, however, the bladder that we have is not yet perfectly round, and thus it is sent into a shaping machine which wraps polyester or nylon thread around the inner bladder. These threads are the ones that create the spherical shape of the ball and prevent them from being deformed. So we now have completed the interior bladder of the ball, but we still have to make the cover of the ball. This uh, synthetic rubber or leather is sent into a punch press in order to create 6 cover panels per ball. The cover panels, along with the interior bladder created, is sent into a vulcanizer. Uh, the interior bladder is also coated with glue prior to being placed inside the chamber of the vulcanizer. After this, we now have a basketball but with a smooth surface. The ball is carefully inspected for gaps between the panels. If needed, gap fillers will be used and the ball is sent to a different vulcanizer that is specially molded in order to produce a basketball with a pebble-like surface. These basketballs are then stored for additional 24 hours to test if they can hold the air. Now I will briefly discuss the production of rubber shoes or sneakers. The rubber shoes consists of two parts, the upper part which is made of fabric and the lower part or soles which is made of rubber. Uh, in the making of the soles, natural rubber, synthetic rubber, and curing agents such as sulfur or peroxide are mixed. This mixture is then placed into a steel mold which is then sent into a heated hydraulic press. Uh, afterwards, the excess rubber is cut to have a perfectly formed sole. Meanwhile, the shoe upper uh, fabric are placed into cutters that shapes the different parts of the shoes such as the collar foam, the tongue, the inside lining, and the heel counter. The different parts are then stitched together in order to form the upper part of the shoe. This is then placed over a shoe last, which is a mold that emulates a foot to give the shoe its shape. The last is made out of aluminum in order to sustain and spread the heat evenly during vulcanization. Then, a foxing tape, also known as an outsole wall, which is a rectangular string of rubber, will be used to bond the upper and the soles of the shoes. Finally, the shoes are sent to an autoclave for vulcanization. The autoclave operates at temperatures ranging from 120 to 180 degrees Celsius and pressures of 140 to 350 kilopascals. However, these high temperatures create limitations in what kind of materials should be used for a vulcanized rubber shoe. This is because polymer-based fabrics such as polyester has a big risk of melting during the process. But despite this, there are also heat-resistant polymer-based materials suitable for vulcanization. Uh, also take note that the process for shoemaking may vary depending on the type of shoes you are creating but the basic elements of the process remain the same. What I have shown here is only a general process. So now, let's talk about statistics. On the global scale, the rubber industry is projected to grow and it will reach a value of $51.21 billion by 2027. Between 2019 to 2027, the industry has a compound annual growth rate of 5.3%. However, the industry is expected to face some competition to materials such as plastics and vinyl. This is because the plastics and vinyl are more inexpensive and some materials like PET, PP, and ABS have better elasticity, rigidity, anti-slip, and durability. Additionally, 35 to 40 billion pounds of rubber are produced each year, and the Asia-Pacific region remains the largest producer and consumer of rubber. 
The following charts here shows the top three countries in terms of natural and synthetic rubber exports and imports. The production of rubber are dominated by Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. And the importers of natural rubber are led by China, United States, and Malaysia, respectively. Meanwhile, as for synthetic rubber, South Korea, United States, and Japan leads globally for its production. And the top importers are China, United States, and Germany. So for the global rubber consumption in terms of type, globally, most of the rubber consumed is the synthetic type, as it accounts for 70% of the global rubber consumption. Meanwhile, natural rubber only comprises 30%. The demand for both types of rubber are increasing, and this is due to the increased demand from automotive, clothing, and footwear industries. In terms of application, rubber is most used for automobile tires. This is then followed by non-tire automotive rubber parts such as oil seals, radiator hoses, and gaskets. Rounding off the list are industrial, footwear, and other applications of rubber not listed. So for the rubber industry here in the Philippines, the rubber industry in our country is worth 10.7 million pesos. We are also ranked seventh in terms of natural rubber production. However, we only produce 2% of the world's natural rubber supply. While the rubber industry is projected to grow globally, it is unfortunate that the industry is experiencing a decline in our country. This is due to the low quality of rubber that we produce as well as high logistics and energy costs. Another factor to the decline of the industry is the current conflict and instability in Mindanao, as this is the place where we obtain most of our natural rubber crop. So given our situation today, similar to other industries, the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic has affected the rubber industry negatively. The lockdowns caused by the pandemic led to the shutdown of production facilities and raw material transportation, which then affected the supply chain of manufacturers. In 2020, the global production dropped by 5%, which caused a massive drop in revenue.